Welcome everyone to the first tutorial in a series of tutorials on Pure Pursuit and Motion Profiling. Uh, I hope uh, you get something out of this and we're going to start w on this video with just getting a basic move to a point working and hopefully in the future be able to create something, something like this where we have a path that could be jagged edges and with a lot of points yet we're rounding the edges and making it into a nice smooth and continuous curve without needing to know any calculus or more advanced higher level math. It's And it's very adaptive, very customizable and you can have different following distances and different amounts of rounding. Very powerful for FRC and FTC uh, and I hope Hope you guys like it. All right, so we're gonna start over here with creating a basic op mode, which is just, we just have an init and loop method similar to any uh, FTC SDK. And we're gonna start by creating a new class. This class is gonna handle all of our movement and I guess I'll call it a uh, robot movement. All right. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a go to point method. And I'm going to be working with a static method. You can criticize me all you want, but that's the tutorial, guys. <laughs> okay, so it's probably static void. Uh, uh, go to position, and it's going to take in a couple of arguments. It's going to take an X position, a Y position. Um, eventually, we'll add more to this, but just for this tutorial, X, Y. And we're going to have um, double movement speed, or I'll... I'll use my camo caps, yes, good java here. And then we're gonna also have, uh, is that all we need? We'll probably add more eventually, but that's good enough for now. All right, so first of all is we're gonna make sure um, we need to know everything about where the robot is, so uh, world x position. Just gonna make sure we import all that, don't worry about this. Okay, so to start, we're gonna first get um, the, we need to worry, start to worry about angles and directions and all that. So I'm going to pull up paint here. And I do have a Wacom tablet. I'm a horrible artist on this thing, so excuse this. So, Okay, so, so we have the robot at, uh, and that's the select tool. Very good, very good. Okay. We have the robot somewhere over here. And we have our target point somewhere over here. And this could be at any angle. There's a number of things we need to do to figure out the optimal direction to get to there. Now, first of all, in in most robotics competitions, your drivetrain is going to have an optimal direction. Whether you like it or not, there's going to be some direction where it's just faster, more efficient, or basically what you design it for. So in our drive, we use a mechanum drive. Our best direction is the forwards direction, although arguments can be made. You technically have the same power output over any direction. But our forwards direction is geared the fastest because of how the mechanum wheels work and we want to preserve as much forward movement as possible. All right, so that's going to require um, two steps. One is to turn towards the optimal angle. And while we're turning there, we don't have to be done turning before we do this. We want to be moving towards the target position, which is over here. All right. So the robot's at any angle. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to calculate, let me use the line tool here to make it easier. We want to divide this up into components. Now first we're going to want to calculate um, this, which is our target X. Uh, let me just use the keyboard here. Uh, I don't know how to use the keyboard, clearly. Okay, it's a text tool, there we go, okay, so it's going to be target X minus our robot, our current x, so I'll call that robot x, and this is the y dimension I know. Uh, why can't I undo this? <sighs> okay, so I'm gonna have to move this, nice, perfect, first try, okay, so same thing here, we have target y minus the robot y. So first we're gonna calculate this angle over here. And that's, I'll call this, uh, absolute angle. And the absolute angle is independent of any, where the robot is facing, it doesn't matter. It's based on the world coordinates, it's the direction to get to this vector. So we're going to start by programming that. Alright. So knowing our basic 
Uh, trig, uh, we're gonna create double absolute angle to target. I'm at the five minute mark here, I don't wanna go too long. So, okay, so absolute angle to target equals math that A102. And A102 is a really nice method because it incorporates all the different quadrants of arc tangent. You know, arc tangent only has is positive in quadrants one and three, which is obnoxious because quadrant three angles look the same as quadrant one angles, but A102 takes that into account. We don't have to worry about it. It's nice and easy. So we're gonna do, of course, opposite over adjacent. So Y minus our world Y position, and then X minus our world X position. Wonderful. Okay, so we have our target our angle in world space, and yes, I mistyped that. I know you guys are gonna get me for that. Okay, so now we have that. Now what we have to do is we have to calculate the relative angle, which is a problem because the robot could be in any orientation. Now, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to use, yeah, so we're gonna use our current angle to calculate that. And let me just make sure I have the key up so I don't mess anything up, okay. Uh, double relative, relative angle to the point equals, and I'll explain a problem with this in a moment, but it's gonna be our absolute angle to point minus our current angle. And because this is the way I've done it all the time, for some reason I feel better about myself when I put in the angle 90 as forwards. So I'm gonna need to subtract that there. Yeah, it's horrible, I know. Welcome to the cringe. Okay, so we have that, but there's a problem. What if we had, we're subtracting angles here. What if we had an angle that was at 359 degrees and one at, at one degree? And I can draw a circle here as well. So say we had an angle like this. And we wanted to find the delta angle in here, so this tiny angle. Well, you'd say, okay, well, you just subtract the 1 minus the 359, and we get, oh, crap. We have an issue. It will be more than one rotation, even though this angle is tiny. So we need a new method. And that method is basically going to be, let me just make sure I'm not going over time. Okay, so yeah. We're going to need a new method called angle wrap. And we're going to need a new class for this, because we want to organize our code, and we'll call this... Um, uh, math functions, great. And what this is gonna do is very simple. So angle wrap, double angle. It's going to take in, uh, and of course it's a return type of double. It's gonna take in an angle and it's going to make sure that this angle is in the range of positive 180 to negative 180 degrees. Anything above that, it will subtract or add rotations to make sure that it's within. So, to do that, it's pretty simple. All we have to do is, well, for, so first of all, we gotta make sure that we're writing in loops, because if we're not writing in loops, then it could, uh, could have multiple rotations. So, while um, angle is less than negative math dot pi, then we're gonna say angle plus equals math dot pi, uh, two times math dot pi. That's a full, that's a full turn in radians. Yeah, so I'm, I am working in radians here. It's gonna be, you're gonna wanna be familiar with that. Otherwise, if you don't wanna be familiar with that, then you can just use negative math dot two radians, 180, but I'm not gonna do that, okay. Same thing for here. If we're greater than math dot pi, we know we have a problem, and we're going to say, um, angle minus equals two times math dot pi and then finally return angle wonderful and make sure to comment that uh, makes sure an angle is within the range negative 180 to 180 degrees all right so now we can go back to our robot movement, and now we can use that. We can just simply apply an angle wrap and make sure you're using IntelliJ, because if you're not, then it's just a, it's just a bad time using Eclipse. I'm sorry. Um, so, okay, so we have that. And now we have the relative point angle. That's critical, because now we know how to move relative to our current rotation. So it's really easy from here. 
Now we have to just divide it up into components so that way we can apply the movement. So uh, we're gonna use relative x to point and that's just the x component of this giant um, vector and that's just the cosine of our relative angle to point times oh and we need the total distance so I forgot about that let's define that up here double distance to target equals and we just we it's just we don't have time to actually type in the power so use math uh, hypot uh, world expedition y minus world y position we we'll just just do it that's fine okay so times distance to target that's the that's the x component and now we need the y component math.sign relative angle to point times distance to target wonderful so now we have a problem we we have this movement speed we need to figure out and and another problem is that this distance to target it could be huge it could be uh 300 centimeters away it could be barely any centimeters away and we need to make sure we're going at the right power because usually robots want it you want to be using a pretty consistent power throughout the movement to avoid having to do to accelerate like crazy and yeah so we have to change this vector to be what's called normalized meaning the total the sum of the square the square root of the squares of the components is less than or equal to one so that means that the total amount of movement is going to be consistent. So to do that, it's pretty simple. We have to say um, this will be our x power, so we can now finally call this movement x power. We have to preserve the shape of the vector. So the shape is defined by the ratios of the components. So well, how do we preserve that? Well, so the, the way I've come up with, with doing it is um, is using percentages. So we use our relative x to point divided by the sum of the absolute values of the components. And I'll explain this in a minute. Relative x to point, sum of the absolute values of the components. So what that means is that no matter what the total magnitude of the vector we're going in is, this movement x power is guaranteed to be from zero to one, which is very nice. And yet it, it's still the same ratio of x power to total power and y power to total power. All right, so we can do the same thing for the y. We take our y power, divide it by the sum of the absolute values. Absolute value of relative. Uh, did I put this in opposite? That's going to get to me. So yeah, no. All right. So now we have that. We can finally say movement x. That's our basic. That's, that's what's going to be applied to the robot equals movement x power movement y equals movement uh, I mistyped that yeah equals movement y power IntelliJ is just automatically importing this for me so gotta love IntelliJ and let's make sure to comment this later <laughs> I'm not gonna do that now okay so now we can finally use the beautiful method we've created and we can say uh, uh, robot movement since we wrote it all statically we don't even need an instance it's really nice horrible programming but honestly it's really easy and nice to use so um, so we're gonna plug in our X let's say we're gonna go to uh, the middle of the field don't ask me why I know this 358 over 2 358 over 2 and we'll go with a movement speed of like 0.2 ish Point three. Fine. I want to see it dither at the end. All right. Um, is there anything else? The one other thing I'm going to make sure is that our robot starts in the right position. Let's start at like 50, comma 50, and we'll start at an angle of 180, negative 180. So let's try this. Let's see what happens. Hopefully everything works. All right, and there we have it. 
The robot seems to move in the right direction to the center of the field and we're getting oscillation. It's really bad and we'll work on that in later tutorials. But yeah, we have the basic algorithm working and don't we're not done yet because we need to make sure our relative calculation is working. So let's change the robot angle to be like negative 45. Make sure that still works. If it, uh, what? Oh yeah. Yep, so it's still working perfectly, and our method does as we want it. Alright, so that pretty much concludes our tutorial, and the first tutorial in the series of uh, Pure Pursuit and Motion Profiling. Thank you guys so much for watching, and let me know if I like didn't explain something so well, or you want more details on whatever, I'm happy to elaborate. And until the next time, see you guys.